Okay, welcome back to another edition of Cannabis in Canada with Jason Wilcox. Uh, I'm here to report, I mean, the city of Vancouver has made a provocative move, a very provocative move, um, basically challenging the federal government of Canada in relation to medical marijuana and dispensaries. In fact, they even spelt it different. The chief inspector for the, let's see here, the chief license inspector has actually made the proposal here. And uh, we have a few people coming on the show to talk about this particular issue in a series that we'll be letting go. Starting off with my guest today, Mr. Don Breer. Don, thanks for coming back on the show. My pleasure. It's always a pleasure to see you, Jason. So this must make you happy. Oh yeah, I'm thrilled. I think it's, it's one of the best things ever. I mean, I remember many, many, many years ago, 1972, the Levine Commission came out and they said, hey, you know, this stuff is safe. It's been studied by doctors, it's been studied by the police, politicians, people themselves, and everybody agreed that it was a safe thing and it should have been regulated back then. And here we are with some 40 some odd years later, and it's still just barely scratching the surface. And to our viewers, our viewers should note this, that Don has done more time in jail for medical marijuana and marijuana in general than Mark Emery. You know, he's probably the longest standing in Canada. Most importantly, Don goes back to the days of decline when he was raided, done time for that because he was serving the recreational community, Can Canadians basically, and, and, once, and medical, and uh, came back out, touched street, got himself together, came right back out, and boom, opened up Weeds. Yeah, Weeds, Glass and Gifts. Yeah, weeds, right Glass and Gifts is now a brand name across well, Vancouver. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to brand it as you know, the best quality, the best everything, the safest place, uh, just an all-around thing. We're creating jobs. We have 44 people working with us, and uh, we're trying to. We're, well, actually, we're getting it implemented, that medical and dental, and we're paying uh, a couple of dollars or more above minimum wage. And I think it's a win-win situation in every way. They are paying UIC, Canada Pension, personal income tax. Uh, we've, we've been in touch with the federal government, and uh, uh, we're, we're we're paying GST on all the marijuana products. Provincially, they have no category, so. They can't uh, accept uh, uh, money for uh, cannabis and the provincial sales tax, but I'm sure that will change soon enough. And, uh, you know, it, it, in every way, it, it helps the community. And uh, we also free up police re resources to go after violent criminals. So we're, t we're taking not only the, the cash away, the cash flow away from people who buy guns, as an example, Surrey, where they have shootouts almost on a daily basis. And uh, that's why they, they, they buy their, their guns, either by trading marijuana or, or just selling it and, and buying these kind of things and bullets and heroin and human trafficking, all these kind of things, right? So we want to bring it in and support uh, our community. The, the, the most precious asset that Canada has are the children of this country. And if we don't have them well-educated, well-fed, then we, you know, we're going to lose out. Absolutely. Now, some of this stuff, um, one of the things that I guess that sticks right out to me right away is it says that all your staff and yourself would have to have a criminal record check done annually to continue serving the well, medical yeah, community. Yeah, yeah. I think it's more related to, uh, along the lines of if you're associated with gangs or anything like that. Again, the, the whole issue here is to take the money out of the uh, black market and put it into the, you know, the, the, the consumer market here, in, into uh, the tax system. And into the job market, right? Well, you and, so, you, you and I would agree that a free and fair market is what we fought for for many years. Oh, of course, yeah. And and so once more, just just getting it out of that uh, gray area and the black area is another step forward, right? So that's what we're looking to do. Absolutely. No, it is progression. It's just some of this is scary because I hear the word compliance. And I remember in 2012 saying to people that were applying to be licensed producers to be careful because that word compliance is very open-ended. Now, the city is saying if you meet compliance, you know, and they'll issue these these licenses. So have they approached Weeds, Glass and Gibbs and said, would you like to apply for one of these? Um, yes, we, we've been approached by, by uh, several inspectors from the city, different ones for everything from Coastal Health, which is, uh, you know, for uh, uh, edibles, as well as, well as uh, you know, electrical, fire, plumbing, all that kind of, all the building codes. But they also send the supervisors around to see and take information because, again, we knew this was coming. Uh, if, if they wanted them to not be here, we wouldn't be here. All they have to do is, is, is just start shutting them down one at a time, and over the course of time, they'd all be gone. So they realized the benefits at, uh, to the society, not only as, as, uh, as job creation, tax creation, but it also, it, it's a, it's a lose situation for the gangs because so, the money is going away from them. So here's the thing, they allow 
and they, they say it, it's okay to go ahead and, and sell flour under this new proposal, but you can't sell extracts. So it's both illegal. Well, yeah, but I know I understand where you're yeah, going with like in the I future. I understand that too, but here's the deal. These are only proposals. You know, there's there's one end of the spectrum and then and then there's another end of the spectrum. And hopefully instead of, you know, arguing and fighting about it, we can negotiate and discuss it and we can set up some kind of a, a, a framework that uh, is agreeable to everybody. You know, there'll be a little bit of win and win and a little bit of lose lose, but so long as we can work uh, together to to get this set up, um, it's going to work. This is not like uh, Texas. If this was Texas, this wouldn't be happening, or or places like that where where they're so firmly entrenched against uh, cannabis. Well, to be fair, there are basing a lot of this particular proposal, in my own opinion, on Washington, Colorado, and by their well, own mission. Yeah. The thing is, the problem is, is Washington State. Uh, they're they're pushing it back into the black market because they've overtaxed it and overregulated it. What happened was a uh, ten dollar gram now is forty dollars or plus, and so. The criminals before the black market used to be able to, you know, maybe maybe get ten dollars a gram or, or something less than that to sell it. Now at twenty dollars a gram, the you know the black market's going to thrive over and above that, and is going to sell at half the price of the state. So again, they're going to lose jobs. They're going to have more enforcement problems. They're going to have to get more investigation teams, and and then they're going to have the tax department. Well, once more, they you know they're they're blowing it. So. Since 1997, when the British Columbia Compassion Club Society opened till now, we have had very much a, um, you know, and I think this is why we, we now have had an explosion. I guess what I'm getting at, we went to 80 plus clubs is in this proposal. They're saying right. in, this, in, 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 in these uh, probably to areas. So they say 300 meters, you have to be away from a community center. 300 yes. meters, you have to be away from other clubs. So I'm just wondering about how many people, and there's a zone, there's a general Vancouver zone you have to fall in. Uh, and not on Granville Street. This is something else. A business, uh, another well, alcohol, entertainment district. Alcohol and cannabis do not mix. Right, but right. alcohol is allowed on Granville, and cannabis, the safer of the two, is well, not. Well, you know, again, that's that's early proposal. That's, so. open for, that's open for debate, right? But anyways, so uh, I, again, the three hundred meter thing. Uh, well, for, first of all, alcohol and schools is uh, one hundred and fifty meters, so it's half the distance. So yeah. I, I think that if you look at Again, the 420 event with anywhere from estimates of 20 or over the course of the, uh, the day, maybe 40,000 people came and went through there. As opposed to uh, you know an alcohol fueled event, they have to put fences up, 10 times as many washrooms, and there are fights and everything else that go with it. So looking after a cannabis store or cannabis events uh, is far, far uh, less costly and less traumatic for anybody, including you know the police who have to deal with people who are you know intoxicated on other drugs like alcohol or anything else right so you know the the uh, uh, the, the meter thing uh, it should be uh, uh, less than a bar because it's less dangerous than, than alcohol and as far as between other uh, other establishments uh, there's a, a pub and then there's a licensed restaurant and right next to that there's another licensed restaurant so they have they have many many uh, alcohol outlets right next to them and right across the street from one's a coffee outlet is another coffee outlet. So you know, I, I think I think more than likely a free enterprise, and you know, with some fair and decent rules uh, set up uh, for for these types of establishments, I, I think that it, it not only is a win-win situation for the, the the people, even even people who do not smoke cannabis, because their four hundred and forty million dollars per year can be diverted into you know, let's say how about the two million children that go to bed hungry in this country every single day. Uh, that, that would put a lot of food on their table. How about education for our children? How about hospitals? We want that. It's we the people, right? It's, that's what we're asking for. That's what we want. I agree. We the people. I mean, believe me, as you know, I'm a person of law and not politics. I love, I love the fact that the Constitution of Canada protects you know, our rights and our liberties. Sure. And it's something like this. And again, that, that word compliance. So I just, I'm really glad to, to get your take on, on some of the issues that are here. So what's up next? Is you go to City Hall next and... Um, well, basically, it, it's, uh, it's the very, very start. It's like a seedling that, that is so small that you can't even see it. It's underground. And now it's coming up. And so now we have to you know, grow it. And we have to get it to the point of making it function and bear fruit. And that's stores in Vancouver. And that's legal ones where people can come in with basically their ID and get what they want in a clean, safe environment. Absolutely. No, I guess supply. This is the one question that got me right off the hop. Hey, 
Apparently, from what I understand, it's still illegal to buy and sell cannabis in, 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 uh, in, in Vancouver or in this country, for that matter. And so, uh, what do they think? It just appears magically? No, it's got to be grown. So, But what they need to do is, is, if there's any issues with this in Vancouver, they need to set aside certain areas. If you follow the rules and you have the right everything, then you can grow some weed in an industrial area. And that's it's, it's so maybe simple. down the road you think that maybe they well, I think they it's would be done right now here in Vancouver uh, as far as my understanding is there are uh, cannabis grows that are legal here in Vancouver all they have to do is put a few more up no problem they can supply all the demand here and the cash can stay here right here right here in this city and it can be circulated in this city and it can create jobs in this city and pay for a lot of things 60 million dollars in Colorado what do they think they're going to do with that money? You know, they're going to they're going to throw it into going after marijuana people with the police force and the, the courts. No, they're putting it in schools. They're putting it in, you know, whatever they need. So now with the license legal supply being the marijuana for medical purposes regulations, the licensed producers out there, the only legal supply in Canada, they have also opened their clinics like in St. Catharines and recently in Alberta. Yeah, um, they've opened Great. their clinics. Fabulous. So, what's your take on on some of that potential posturing? Um, well, hang on. Let, let, let's let's just cut to the chase here. First of all, and number one, it shouldn't be illegal. And second, and 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 uh, that most importantly, I mean, how many people do you see going to their doctor and getting a prescription for medical vodka or medical rye or rum? It just doesn't happen, right? Why? Because we have come down the intelligence road and realized that we don't need this kind of thing to tie up our doctors when we have people who have cancer, uh, you know, people who have arthritis, people who are in pain, all this kind of stuff. Don't waste our doctor's times with this. Just, if you need it, go buy it. Just get your picture ID, go to a, a, a friendly store that's employing people, you know, and, uh, and buy it there and take it home. This is, you know, I would agree, I and mean, that's how it should be. I mean, that's legalization. That's a free and fair market go. in legalization. Sure. What we should and have and for let Canada. The, let the free market dictate who who survives and who doesn't. That's right, in a free and fair market, and that's that's, right. that's kind of what the keynote that I'd like to get out to our viewers and people understand. Now, in closing, what's your take on this thirty thousand dollar licensing fee? Um, we talked in brief about it before okay, going on here. here. Here's the, here's my take on it. Um, we have a barber shop on one side. And, and we have a, 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 a fingernail place on the other side. So as far as I know, the barbershop is paying $240 a year for his license. And uh, he has fire inspections just like uh, a pot store would. He would have uh, building inspections just like a pot store would. And business license just like a pot store would. And so, you know, I'm trying to think of... Uh, uh, the, the, the claim is they need to start a new category. That's fine. Uh, but if they... If they destroy the industry or hurt the industry while it's still growing, it's like you know, it's like hurting the industry. So they need to you know make sure that the industry can grow and and, and get nurtured and create a lot of jobs because in the end, the largest contributor to everything will be the people who are employed through their taxes, through their money that they spend, through the you know UIC Canada pension, all that kind of stuff, right? So that'll be the biggest and largest generator. Of, uh, of income for the government, as well as, you know, taxing the material, uh, both provincial and federal tax and, and putting some kind of a surcharge on there. And, and uh, that would, uh, it would be, a, again, a win-win situation for it. Let me play devil's advocate here. Let's just say that they go ahead and they do this. They permit everybody um, for one year, standing clubs, they permit them. And then after we legalize and the MMPR, the licensed producers, Supply Canada, and they say, okay, now we're changing this Vancouver proposal to say you must supply MMPR cannabis in all the clubs. Well, I mean, you know, that's, oh, okay, here, here you go. Um, uh, now I'm a uh, uh, Molson Canadian, and I'm going to tell you that you have to supply all Molson Canadian products in your stores. Do you, you think that would fly? Well, we know it's not. I'm just asking. I, I well, said, let yeah. me play devil advocate yeah, here. <laughs> well, that, 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 I don't think that one even get off the ground. Yeah, yeah, it would not because you know. Listen again, once more. If you want if they want to sell to us, then all right, come and knock on my door. Don't tell me I have to buy from you. Just come and knock on my door and show me your product. And and, and if it passes the test, we'll take it. Absolutely. Don Briere, everybody. Once again, Don, thank you for yeah, coming on the you. show. It's uh, it, it's oh, always yes. it's always great to have you on here. Yeah. Uh, Check out Weeds, Glass, and Gifts. Pay attention to Don. He's a soldier that goes way back. He set it down in BC here. 
for legalization for the recreational crowd if you have it and for the medical crowd if you need cannabis you see don and we're hoping that this will just continue to move on and progress <laughs> forward where Attaboy. we can all live in a legalization market yeah, exactly. free and fair see you in the next segue cheers <laughs>